the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, commonly known as the Speaker of the House, is the presiding officer of the United States House of Representatives. The office was established in 1789 by Article 1, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution. The Speaker is the political and parliamentary leader of the House of Representatives and is simultaneously the House's presiding officer, the facto leader of the body's majority party, and the institution's administrative head. Speakers also perform various other administrative and procedural functions. Given these several roles and responsibilities, the Speaker usually does not personally preside over debates. That duty is instead delegated to members of the House from the majority party. Neither does the Speaker regularly participate in floor debates. The Constitution does not require the Speaker to be an incumbent member of the House of Representatives. Although every Speaker thus far has been, the Speaker is second in the United States presidential line of succession. After the Vice President and ahead of the President pro tempore of the Senate. The current House Speaker is Democrat Nancy Pelosi of California. She was elected to a fourth term as Speaker on January 3, 2021, the first day of the 117th Congress. She has led the Democratic Party in the House since 2003 and is the first woman to serve as Speaker. The House elects its Speaker at the beginning of a new Congress or when a Speaker dies, resigns or is removed from the position intra-term. Since 1839, the House has elected speakers by roll call vote. Traditionally, each party's caucus or conference selects a candidate for the speakership from among its senior leaders prior to the roll call. Representatives are not restricted to voting for the candidate nominated by their party, but generally do, as the outcome of the election effectively determines which party has the majority and consequently will organize the House. As the Constitution does not explicitly state that the Speaker must be an incumbent member of the House, it is permissible for representatives to vote for someone who is not a member of the House at the time, and non-members have received a few votes in various Speaker elections over the past several years. Every person elected Speaker has been a member. Representatives who choose to vote for someone other than their party's nominated candidate usually vote for someone else in their party or vote present. Anyone who votes for the other party's candidate would face serious consequences. As was the case when Democrat Jim Traficant voted for Republican Dennis Haystert in 2001. In response, the Democrats stripped him of his seniority and he lost all of his committee posts. To be elected Speaker, a candidate must receive a majority of the votes cast if no candidate wins a majority. The roll call is repeated until a speaker is elected. Multiple roll calls have been necessary only 14 times since 1789. And not since 1923, when a closely divided house needed nine ballots to elect Frederick H. Gillette Speaker. Upon winning election the new speaker is immediately sworn in by the Dean of the United States. House of Representatives, the chamber's longest serving member, the first speaker of the house. Frederick Muhlenberg of Pennsylvania, was elected to office on April 1, 1789, the day the House organized itself at the start of the First Congress. He served two non-consecutive terms in the Speaker's chair, 1789-1791 and 1793-1795. As the Constitution does not state the duties of the Speaker, the Speaker's role has largely been shaped by traditions and customs that evolved over time. Scholars are divided as to whether early Speakers played largely ceremonial and impartial roles or whether they were more active partisan actors. A partisan position from early in its existence, the Speakership began to gain power in legislative development under Henry Clay. In contrast to many of his predecessors, Clay participated in several debates and used his influence to procure the passage of measures he supported, for instance, the Declaration of the War of 1812, and various laws relating to Clay's, American system, economic plan. Furthermore, when no candidate received an electoral college majority in the 1824 presidential election, causing the president to be elected by the House, Speaker Clay threw his support to John Quincy Adams instead of Andrew Jackson.
thereby ensuring Adam's victory. Following Clay's retirement in 1825, the power of the speakership once again began to decline, despite speakership elections becoming increasingly bitter. As the civil war approached, several sectional factions nominated their own candidates, often making it difficult for any candidate to attain a majority. In 1855 and again in 1859, for example, the contest for speaker lasted for two months before the House achieved a result. Speakers tended to have very short tenures during this period. For example, from 1839 t. 